Hello and welcome everyone. I am Andrew Trepin and I am free and open source software developer. Uh, probably known as an author of Geeks Home and RD projects. And on this stream series, we talk about uh, development practices, tools, uh, share part of my usual workday, and travel towards an ethical, sustainable business. It's already 25th or actually 26th uh, day of our stream series and we did a lot of work and let's recap some of it. We discussed tips, tricks and workflows uh, on how to better and work more efficiently, what approach I personally use and what I can recommend. Um, we talked about contracts, taxes, uh, company creation and other you know, uh, stuff related to creating a business, not much, uh, but still covered some basics. We did a lot of work on various free and open source software projects, including Cardi, Geeks and a few others. Uh, also, uh, we improved some development processes in RD project. Uh, we did some work related to the doc documentation. Uh, of such works and uh, of course we improved our streaming setup, uh, fixed various libraries, uh, added chat overlay and so on. Another topic was uh, Nginx and we discussed it as a project, as a free software project which uh, has some good monetization and also we discussed it as a program and I would like to continue uh, to explore Nginx and various ways to apply it because it's really very widespread program and one of them uh, and one of the programs that I actually use and would like to use it more efficiently and for this we need a little more work to wrap it uh, in a more viable guile API. Also um, quite a big topic on, of the stream series was structural editing and tree sitter we packaged three sitter for gigs. We packaged a lot of grammars. We tried uh, combobulate package uh, and explored structural navigation and structural editing uh, using HTML uh, three sitter mod built in in Emacs 29 and did uh, a lot of different stuff related to it. And of course, another big topic of the stream series was tests, uh, Surface 64 uh, and various tooling for running those tests. And we actually will continue to work on it. Uh, we already have quite a good progress and I will demonstrate uh, by example in a few minutes. After we discuss our uh, today's topic, we will see what we already have and we'll try to improve it a little bit. Of course, I need to bring a chat here. To be able to see what people uh, write in a comment. Okay. Uh, oops. We have it up and running. Very good. Very nice. Uh, okay, about Guile development environment. There are a few points that I usually do during the development and uh, there are uh, possibilities to improve the workflow, but uh, the most basic uh, thing is uh, managing dependencies like libraries that I use. Uh, most of them uh, I, I have very small dependency fo footprint of, uh, of RD project. I depend only on gigs mostly uh, and built-in libraries, but still uh, you need to manage them somehow. And here you can use different tools. Probably my weapon of choice will be gigs for this uh, reason, uh, for this task. And uh, I don't actually have a need of a separate uh, dependency of project manager right now. Uh, so I will say that most of my dependencies will be managed by Geeks in, in the nearest future. But later when we will be working on a different guy pro projects, uh, we get a little more experience and I will highlight the approaches that probably alternative approaches to man manage dependencies. 
But right now uh, they installed by gigs. And after that, uh, I need to just set an appropriate load passes, guide load passes, of course, to make them available for my uh, REPL. And of course, to the other tooling built on top of this REPL. Of course, we have a REPL. And uh, of course, it's not very cool to run a REPL in a separate terminal emu emulator and send uh, parts of the code to it or do some manual work with it. Uh, it's where you need to have an integration with your text editor or development environment or whatever you call it. Uh, because it brings a lot of benefits, you can write the code in the tool that is supposed for writing co code and uh, evaluate it straight in the buffer when you actually write this code without copy pasting, without uh, typing a long comment uh, inside REPL which will disappear after the REPL session uh, complete and so on. Uh, also, um, integration with the REPL and the text editor uh, allows to bring other capabilities like completion, uh, go to definition and other stuff. And uh, all this uh, we have uh, thanks to Geyser or Geyser uh, package, which written something like this. And uh, I will show a few examples of its usage uh, uh, a little bit later. Okay, uh, also we have a navigation, editing and refactoring capabilities. Uh, for now, for now I have them uh, implemented using smart parents and some basic built-in uh, functions in Emacs and they not uh, uh, ideal but they work good enough. I can navigate uh, using uh, some objects like S expressions and uh, I also can copy, edit, uh, select, uh, remove and uh, so on. So I can operate on um, scheme source code somehow efficiently uh, and I can even refactor it but refact refactoring is not uh, actually real refactoring it's just uh, text uh, transformation on the bigger volume uh, of text files like uh, I go uh, search through the current file or through the uh, through few files and edit them uh, all together but it's still not a real refactoring it doesn't know anything about <coughs> the structure of the source code it uh, knows only uh, something about the text which represents the source code and that is why uh, it's kind of lacking the tooling in this area is kind of lacking for guy right now but probably later we will make a uh, LSP server or something else uh, that will bring capabilities for real refactoring. So we can, uh, for example, rename the symbol and all the occurrence uh, of the symbol will be updated in the project as well. And something uh, like this. Also, we, we can get some static analysis uh, and uh, maybe a better completion. Uh, but I think the completion using the REPL is uh, good enough for now. Mm. But let's see, let's see what it can bring. Uh, also, maybe it will bring a little better go to definition because sometimes go to definition works uh, not exactly as you would like it to work, but but uh, not a big deal because in most cases it works. Uh, testing, it's already possible to run tests, uh, to write tests. And uh, of course, many Gile projects already have uh, such things uh, b built inside them, but uh, usually they run them separately from your REPL and from your development environment. It's, it's just a separate process that you run in your terminal, get some output uh, in the stud out or in the file, and you read through it and go back to your source code uh, and edit something and you run uh, the whole test suite of the project. But it's not uh, the ideal way and this is why we spend a lot of time uh, wrapping around uh, Surfy64 uh, with our own 
um, helper functions and macros. And also th that is why we are building some uh, tooling for Emacs and uh, for Guile itself, which helps to uh, run a particular test, a test uh, all tests of the model, uh, all tests of the project, we run all tests uh, previously executed or we run failed tests and so on. And I will demonstrate how it works today because it's already here and already works. Uh, not ratified, not complete, but still in a very viable state, which is already usable. And linting. Uh, we don't have linting. Uh, probably there are some libraries for basic linting, but it's not very comprehensive, flexible or configurable. And this is another point which currently lacking in the Guy Luka system or at least in my uh, knowledge, because maybe it's already exists somewhere, but I don't know about it yet. And uh, that's it about today's current topic. If you have any questions or additions, please ask. I will be glad to answer and will be glad to know anything new uh, if you have something for me. Let's get uh, to our work. Uh, let's first start our REPL, uh, connect to it, uh, see how load pass a set uh, for it. And after that, we will explore our uh, test tooling that already works, but maybe, maybe requires some fixes in case uh, I missed something in between the streams. Let's see. I will open a project e shell, and here you can see a make file. And inside this make file, uh, you can see a REPL target right here, which calls Geeks REPL with uh, two things. First one is pre inst env, and the second one is minus l uh, flag, and uh, the last is listen on TCP port. Uh, the last thing is just basically make it um, instead of creating a real REPL when we can type something, uh, just to start listening on some port and wait uh, for some connection. And we will connect from our Emacs process to this REPL process. Uh, the second thing is minus L, which sets a load pass, which adds to the load pass the directory called tests and here uh, here in this directory we have all the stuff related to our tests of course uh, and another thing is pre inst and script which allows uh, allows to set one more load pass here it just adds src to the load pass actually uh, it could be rewritten uh, without using of the script, but uh, because I can use it in various places and have load pass passes set in one place, like uh, generic load passes, which usually uh, have to be used with all the comments, I prefer uh, to have it inside a script. And uh, for some uh, special use cases, like running REPL with tests available, uh, I add Th those directories to load pass manually. And uh, one more thing that uh, here we use Geeks REPL instead of Guile REPL, and we use uh, an exact version of Geeks built uh, in the example target profiles Geeks bin directory uh, because it also updates load passes with uh, uh, stuff related to Geeks. And uh, this is how we get our uh, exact version of the gigs and uh, source code for it uh, in our REPL. We could do it manually, but uh, it's a little easier to do it uh, using gigs REPL. Maybe later if you are really interested how uh, it works inside, like gigs REPL, and how to translate it in Guile uh, call, uh, let me know and I will elaborate on it a little more. Okay, mm, so let's let's just call make REPL and 
here you can see that uh, command was launched and nothing uh, else happened. And now we can call gazer connect and specify local host and port. And we are connected in the REPL, we can type something. For example, you can see the value of the load pass variable. And inside the slot pass variable, we see that the first item is actually some source code related to gazer guile, uh, which is uh, useful for uh, interaction uh, between our gazer inside the max and our REPL process, which is a separate process. And here uh, I expect to find some models that allows uh, to extract some information from the REPL and br bring it back to Emacs. For example, here a function which gets a list of completions, uh, here a function which uh, helps to obtain the documentation, and here probably some uh, stuff related to uh, Gazer and Emacs um, interop. It adds a few comments, uh, at least uh, fr fr from what I see here, uh, which uh, actually allows to execute some code passed to uh, to the REPL in a special way, uh, which is which just wraps some logic li like setting current model and so on. Uh, what else we have here? Uh, some stuff related to load passes to the compilation and evaluation. And oh, this is a helper functions. Uh, this is helper function uh, functions, which which actually uh, looks cool. Uh, it is something that we found in uh, something similar to what we found in Geek's discovery uh, namespace uh, in Geek source code. But maybe we actually uh, need those. Uh, to use those functions instead of uh, Geeks one. So it's it's a, a great uh, discovery, and I will add something. Revisit if uh, we need Geeks discovery. Actually, uh, revisit if we can use gazer models instead of the original plan was just to implement some functions of, of geeks discovery that we use uh, and use them but m maybe actually we can use uh, something from gazer models we'll see also we have gazer utils not something really interesting and xref which uh, which allows to implement probably some go to definition uh, functionality inside gazer and this is uh, actually uh, all plain uh, scheme which get added to your REPL when you uh, connect to the REPL uh, with the gazer of course here we have uh, a tests uh, directory which is added with minus l flag and here we have at the beginning dot uh, src directory which is added using preinst uh, env script and probably all of this stuff is added using geeks repl uh, i don't know why we have duplicates here oh or we don't Okay, it's probably different subdirectories uh, of of the same profile in most cases, uh, so it's okay. It's probably okay, but we can explore it in more details uh, someday later, if so somebody interested in it. Okay, we have our REPL run. We have our load pass set uh, to correct values, and uh, of course, all, all the dependencies are available now in our REPL, which is good. Let's see what we have. What we have uh, according to our tooling. I already uh, can evaluate the namespace and uh, 
it compiled at least, uh, which doesn't uh, bring too much guarantees, but at least it doesn't uh, contain any obvious errors. Also, we have rd test el file, which probably should be renamed already because uh, I decided to go with uh, at least temporary name called Gider. Uh, it's like Cedar for closure, but Gider for guile. Uh, and it contains some auxiliary functions and also some uh, real functions, interactive, uh, we, which have interactive keyword, which means that we can call them using uh, Alt X. Uh, and here we have a few key bindings. Let's evolve this buffer. And that means that now we can open some model. Uh, for example, let's see SRC RD serializer Lisp. And for this model, you can see that inside this model, you don't have any tests. But if you call uh, Ctrl T, Ctrl, Ctrl C, Ctrl T, Ctrl M, uh, it will say that it passed all tests. And uh, it shows that it was a zero uh, assertions of each type here. And this is because we didn't load our RD tests Lisp tests uh, namespace. And if we eval it and go back to this model and we'll launch the same command, it will take a little more time and it will show that it passed uh, was, uh, eight asserts uh, and it was three expected fails. That works, that works. The only uh, downside that it doesn't load test namespace automatically, but it could, uh, but it could do it. Uh, let's see, let's see how we can, how we can fix it. It's actually quite hot here. Mm -hmm. Not inside the source code, but uh, in the room when I'm sitting. Okay, run model tests. Uh, let's see, let's see what we can do here. Uh, we can go uh, to the test runners. For now, the naming of the models doesn't make too much sense because, you know, it was a temporary and I didn't update it yet. Uh, but here, but here we can call use models, use models and mod and call it with something like this. Let's eval it. Uh, probably, probably, uh, probably, probably we can't use a variable here. Let's see what it says. It's a syntax. It's a macro. How to get it loaded? Okay, we have reload model. I guess uh, it should work. Uh, reload model is actual. Reload model uh, is actual function, uh, which accepts a model. So it should work. And now uh, let's try it out. Let's let's kill our Ripple connection. Let's restart. Let's restart our REPL. Let's reconnect to it. Whoops. Uh, Gazer connect. And here we go. Uh, we have a connection. We evaluate our model and we go to Lisp, uh, to Lisp model. And here we try to
to run model tests, but we get uh, a prompt for lisp, lisp expression. It usually uh, happens when something wrong, uh, when something wrong with our guile implementation, and it ret uh, returns some unexpected results. Let's try to call it. Uh, let's try to run models test resolve model. Uh, which one? RD serializers test test. I guess it's something like this. Okay, and it worked. It worked. Interesting. Interesting. Mm, and why it doesn't work here? Let's let's try run project tests. RD serializers Lisp test unknown file name for model. Hmm. I definitely see it here. And what uh, get test models says? Get test models. Okay, wh what if what if we uncomment this line and comment this one and it worked. If you uncomment this line, we get an error. Unknown file name for model and the model. What happens? Maybe we have some other function, which also related to loading models. Okay, uh, let's let's just add a to do, and we'll figure out it later, as usual, um, because I don't want to spend too much time on this auxiliary functionality. Uh, it's not a big deal to evaluate a respective test model once in a while. To do uh, load test model if uh, it is not loaded yet. Okay, running call project tests work. Let's get back to our test namespaces and I will demonstrate how our uh, Emacs tooling works. We have a test namespace. It's actually interesting why it says that it's not related to the buffer. 
it would be uh, good to explore No ripple is running started. Uh, it it, it would would be interesting. To find it out why it happens. Because we obviously have a running ripple like very obviously but uh, it don't it don't recognize uh, recognize it and maybe it's even important uh, for some uh, proper uh, loading of the needed models but I, I, I I'm not sure yet and uh, also don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, I would like to demonstrate how how we can use our uh, functionality, how we can use our key bindings. And here I, I use Control C, Control T, and Control M, which bound to Gitter test run model tests. And you can see that it uh, shows that all tests. Uh, a past and uh, here four assertions zero fail zero uh, expected to fail and zero e expected unexpected to pass um, let's see what we can do here uh, we can change the test Uh, actually, we can keep the uh, test the same, but uh, we can update our uh, implementation of the function and let's reevaluate the implementation. And instead of uh, running model tests, we will use gither test rerun tests. And it's bound to control R, and we call it. And it shows that it failed some tests. Uh, and now one uh, assertion is failed and three assertions still passes. And let's, let's try to fix our function. Let's uh, add something to it, reevaluate it. And instead of rerunning all the tests, because it may be time consuming, I will rerun only failed tests using Ctrl C, Ctrl T, Ctrl F. And uh, it shows that it still fails, but uh, now we have uh, one more. Uh, we, we have only one assertion passed and one uh, assertion failed. That means it uh, only runs this test. Uh, we don't have yet a report buffer, so we don't uh, we can see uh, which tests are failed and which are passed. Uh, but I can guess it. Uh, okay, and let's let's fix the test. Uh, actually, b b let's try to fix it one more time, uh, and let's rerun previous tests using just rerun tests. And you see that uh, rerunning tests will rerun only uh, z z those which failed because previous call was rerun failed tests. So uh, we can actually fix our function. Uh, evaluate its definition and rerun tests one more time and you will see now it passes uh, two asserts and uh, zero asserts failed and we can rerun it a few more times but if we call uh, rerun failed tests it will show that zero uh, asserts was zero asserts failed zero asserts uh, passed and now uh, actually no tests are evaluated and uh, of course we can evaluate all the tests of the model and you have four asserts uh, passed and zero failed very good uh, our tooling works 
and uh, it's already really uh, useful. You can develop something, evaluate parts of the code, and uh, restart tests in the background. And uh, it, it can be a test for the whole model or test for a particular uh, functions that you're interested in right now. Actually, uh, if you're really interested in um, launching only one function, you can do something like this right now. RD test uh, runners, test runners, run test. It's probably not exported, right? Yeah, it's not exported. It not exported, so we will use uh, double add here, and here I will, uh, will specify a function, and you can see uh, you can see that only one function was launched, uh, and that's good. Uh, that's good. Mm. We can implement the interface for running a particular test. So, um, for example, it provides a list of uh, options in com completing read interface, and we ca can launch one one test instead of a uh, few. I don't know uh, if it's a, a really critical. Uh, functionality, but uh, looks logical to me. But before doing it, uh, let's let's uh, check a, a few more items. First of all, let's write down the idea. Oh, actually, I already have this idea here. Let's first check that our rerun order is correct. How we will do it? We have a code for uh, rerunning tests and we can just print it out. The list of filtered tests. Display filtered tests. And we have have something like this. Let's run all the project tests. Let's see the the list of tests uh, it seems it seems the reverse to have a reverse order because you can see that the last test evaluated here is ar arithmetic check and string check in simple test group and here I have arithmetic check and string check in simple test group uh, to be the first Also, uh, also it seems that we have a report for each test function instead of grouping the result. Uh, but we can fix it easily with test group.
like this. Let's relate it. It didn't help. It didn't help. Why so? Why so? Very interesting. Okay, okay, uh, I know why it happens. It is because we didn't use this test runner. Test with runner. Uh, test with runner. Okay, now we see, now we see it's it's wrapped uh, in the rerun tests, test group. It starts here. Uh, very cool, but it's uh, a reverse order, not the same order as it was before. And this is a little wrong. Uh, we constructed in, in, uh, in this way for obvious reason, because uh, list was easier to const uh, construct this way. We used cons here. So it's, uh, it was a stack of executed uh, items. What we can do, we can uh, do uh, list construction in the proper order, or we can reverse it. For example, here, uh, filter tests, we can say filtered uh, test reverse uh, of filter tests. We will shadow the definition uh, of this variable and we will see that the order is now correct. We have basic types at the beginning and arithmetic check at the end. Very good. Uh, this is this is a first solution. The second solution will be to construct the, or, uh, the list correctly from the beginning. But it always, it always, uh, tempting to add to the beginning of the uh, single linked uh, list because it's uh, a very cost effective operation and later to pass this list for future operation. But this way uh, our list will operate as a stack, not as a uh, vector which we have a pent operation on. And this uh, implementation is actually much uh, more efficient because otherwise, if we uh, try to add to the end of the list, every time we will go through the uh, whole length of the list and it will require n square uh, time complexity. But here uh, we can do a reverse in a linear time. So it's much more efficient to store the uh, test results, tests in a stack, uh, and let's let's name it more appropriate so it's clear that it is a stack. Results, results, test results, stack. I would say.
tak. Test results stack. Like this. And also uh, one more fix I would like to do. Oops. <coughs> the second fix will be uh, changing the format for storing the values. Now let's pre pretty print it uh, instead of displaying. Will it fail? No. Cool. Here you can see it's already a list of fil filtered functions, but let's let's print uh, just test results because test results is actually an a list. Maybe we can rename test results uh, stack to make it clear that it, it is a stack. Exactly 80 columns. Stack. Actually, we, can, we could do it here, in reverse. And here we can use something like this. Test results. Oh, actually, we can uh, do even better rise s expression we can create uh, one more function let's see can duplicate it uh, this one will be stack and this one let's change them reverse of test runner, test results, stack runner, like this. Okay. It seems that the order is correct right now. I remember clearly that new test is uh, coming before uh, successful test. And also I remember that basic test was at the beginning. Uh, and this is clearly a right order, which we will use. Mm -hmm. Okay, it uh, fixed and now let's Let's store a little bit more information. Right now we have an asso association list of the tests. But association doesn't uh, make much sense here. Because uh, key is a procedure. Procedure object. Which I'm not sure we will be looking for. What uh, I propose to store is something like
imagine something like uh, test itself will be procedure and uh, status will be pass and of course it should be wrapped in a few more brackets like this Now it will be a little more clearer what the content of the stuff. Here it will be a little bit more complicated to extract the function itself, but not that, not, not, not impossible, not impossible. We will need something like a sock a ref x and test like this and of course it should be a lambda do we have cut uh, here in the namespace What uh, is actually cut for is for defining lambda in a little bit easier way. But uh, actually, I don't find it too much appealing to use cut. Let's call get test to be lambda from x. And here, let's take the stuff and place it here. And instead of car, we just use get test and let's see what will be in the our resulting list. Cool, let's remove it and let's update the way we store uh, the information about tests instead of uh, adding a cons we will be adding a list a list uh, like associate uh, uh, association list not not just list uh, and it will contain test test itself and status pass or fail like this it should be okay and let's see rerun failed Actually, how we have uh, implemented rerun failed tests. Okay, here we have a, a lambda, which uh, which compares instead of uh, CDR, we need a sock ref x status. A little bit more meaningful. We see it's, it still works. We updated the way we store it and it still works. Let's see how test results look like. It looks like this. Test procedure, status pass uh, and so on looks viable and feature proof because you know previously we couldn't uh, add any additional information about our test result uh, we just have either pass or fail uh, value uh, in CDR part of of the sync and uh, we have a test in uh, car part of the sync in the 
place of the first element of the pair. Now we have a little more flexible structure of storing this information. Okay, that looks very good to me. And let's let's commit something. By something, I mean, uh, of course, code, not the crime or something else. Here, let's clean this up. Looks okay. Stage it, stage this. And let's say that we store information about executed tests like this. And also we export a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of uh, stuff and uh, including previous runner. And in the code in our um, Elise proper, we use uh, this variable and mutate it. But probably we can uh, provide some kind of function which uh, allows not to access this variable at all. Mm, so make it uh, more hidden from uh, external world. So uh, our Elisp code won't rely on it. And also what I would like to do is uh, to migrate to sex from strings like this. Let's first uh, start with this task. It's done. Uh, let's start with this task. After that, we can do We already have a uh, rerun tests exported, but you know it requires a test runner as an argument. And that is why, that is why maybe maybe we can do it rig, maybe not. Uh, at least, at least we can implement something like Define a run with saving some special uh, wrapper, but we'll see. Hello, Grigory. Nice to see you here. Did you see the part uh, where I uh, demonstrated how our mm, Emacs, Emacs tooling works already with tests and uh, how it reruns tests? Okay, let's migrate to S expressions first. 
uh, what I can do with S expressions. I can define my code in more uh, scheme way. It will be actually Emacs Lisp uh, as expressions, but still, I, uh, I think it uh, won't matter too much because it will be very simple and we won't uh, face the differences between Elisp as expressions and uh, scheme Lisp uh, as expressions. Let me try it out. Uh, we have message uh, which Let's use format, not message. Okay, the empty list is something like this. What about it? Okay, it's serialized, quite good. Uh, very nice. I remember, mm, I remember that in Gazer we already had had the function, which called uh, Gazer wrap wrap region, which accepts a string. But okay, it's not not exactly the same. Let's uh, create our own function. like this and it will basically format format our s expression and here if uh, we have a string do we have such predicate in emacs lisp string String p return true if object uh, is a string. Okay, string p guile code. We return guile code. Otherwise, we wrap it. Gither sex. Actually, we don't even need a helper function. We can just. write the format inside it uh, and it will be even shorter. It, uh, it will miss the documentation, possible documentation here, but whatever. Let's see, uh, everything should work uh, as it worked before. still works but now let's rewrite it uh, rewrite it a little uh, for example run model tests instead of uh, using a string we will use an s expression like this let's try it out oops eval buffer still works and uh, if we introduce an error here, yep, it fails. Uh, good. Now we can use S expressions instead of instead of strings which is a little bit more uh, convenient for me. This is a first part of our refactoring. The second part will be getting rid of uh, this set action.
at API for running tests. Uh, what I can imagine here, like a function run with uh, saving results, which accepts another function. Run f, but uh, saving test results to previous runner. And our our previous runner can be previous runner like this and uh, it can be removed from exports and we just move this this code here Not sure if uh, if it is ideal solution, but it's some solution, and we here can call f not nice code uh, because you know we have an implicit global state here, and we run tests now uh, is not a pure function. Of course, it's never been a pure function because it's actually launched as a uh, test switch I'm pure as well. But now it's even more implicit. But okay. Okay, we are in a uh, imperative world of imperative tests. saving results okay looks looks okay to me and now we can use run with saving results and instead of boom wrong type to apply oh of course of course but it is it is bad it is actually bad the reason why uh, is because when I use run with saving results, I do accept a function. In this case, uh, run project tests accepts no arguments, so it works completely fine, but run model tests is already um, can, can break here. Uh, I'm also curious what's set set returns
let's see if it returns the result it returns unspecified okay then we can't use it can use it uh, as a value for some other uh, expression I uh, I I want to hide this mutable variable in some in some way. So people don't need to act on it explicitly. But actually the code is quite explicit and it, uh, I like it. Okay, okay. Probably I will uh I will keep it. I will keep it and And maybe later we we will provide the macro uh, to just make the same thing. So you just uh, don't need to uh, know about previous runner variable. But okay, uh, maybe some way in the future. For now, we keep it uh, this way, and it already works and works quite good. Let's see. Tests export. Okay, uh, let's say, let's say that we won't be doing it. Uh, we did this one. Let's see what what about it. Uh, I guess we can uh, do this task and finish finish today's stream. Our t t testing tooling uh, already relies on Gazer, so it's it's not a problem if we use this Gazer model. Okay, let's let's take a look. Uh, edit model. Gazer uh, pom pom. Gazer models. Here we have all models, sub models, find model, and model location.
what is ensure uh, very interesting resolve model when it can be found uh, that way either create an empty model contrary is true okay it's interesting um, because right now if we don't have a test model we just create it when we resolving it root models let's see what we have here we have a lot of stuff one more task for the future Oops. Root models, submodels of resolve model of uh, root, all models. How all models works? All child models. Okay, let's see, let's see how it works. Uh, and if it works at all let's open our test runners get model tests all child models it's gazer models Uh, resolve model rd how how it is all child models it should be it should be what the heck okay what uh, what i can do I can uh, go to gazer models. Let's quit all stack traces. And here all child models. We have it defined. And let's call it is resolve model RD. Cool. Cool it works. test we have lisp test any test 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 nginx test very good uh, let's let's save it and let's restart the REPL and let's see how it works with clean REPL state uh, when no other models was evaluated yet
Okay, uh, all child models returns only RD. Okay, it's only uh, works for loaded tests, uh, for loaded mo models. What about all models? How does it work? RD. What about gigs? Okay, uh, it loads a part of gigs models. And it uh, only loads a root RD model. That means that to make tests available, we need to load them first. Mm, for this, we can make a separate function for loading the models. And maybe we uh, can reorganize our test model somehow. But okay, we won't do it right now. We took a brief look at Gazer models and uh, we saw that it works, but not, not the way as all models in um, Geeks Discovery works, because all models uh, also traverses the file system and loads all the necessary models. So, so it's a little different thing. Oops. Okay. Okay, very good, very nice. Uh, we have done uh, a few small but important things. Uh, just a refactoring for cleaning up our code. Uh, we committed some stuff. Uh, so it's almost already in the state when uh, as RD developers can use it. Uh, not yet in the state uh, when we can use it in other Guile projects. But uh, looks nice, looks nice already. Mm, I hope we will we will make it to the state when it can be used uh, by other Guile projects. Uh, I hope so. Okay, let's let's make some conclusion, and this conclusion will be specific to the tooling. Uh, and the idea is, uh, it's enough to have a very basic, like text editor, very basic compiler and shell uh, to be able to do a work, but uh, it can be not ideal setup it may be not very enjoyable, maybe sometimes even frustrating. And uh, it's actually reasonable to spend some time to prepare your development environment for, uh, for yourself, making it more cozy, more productive, uh, and of course more enjoyable. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what is the reason if you don't enjoy what you do? And that is why uh, I can say it's cool to have development environment which makes you happy. 
and uh, that's it for today uh, I really gl uh, glad for everyone who joined and I hope you enjoyed it